all right today we're looking at analog systems in first generation mobile multiplexing technology you want to begin by looking at what is considered as frequency modulation for analog technology analog first generation cellular industry in terms of 1g cellular system that transmit only voice information using a form of what you call fm modulation otherwise known as analog cellular systems primarily provide voice at low speed data communication services over a wide geographic area where you call the fm band frequency modulation it operates between 10 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz on a narrow band analog systems usually send what you call control information in digital form so even though it was analog it still have some form of control information taking place in digital form like call handling in terms of call waiting handoff and so on and the original cellular telephone system which operates on analog fm transmission between 800 to 900 megahertz band if you notice that some of the older cellular phones used to operate on that bandwidth 800 to 900 megahertz band if you recall that i mentioned that every single device will be on a separate frequency just like if you're flying um, an airplane every aircraft beat um, uh, 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 model aircraft you have to operate on a different frequency band all entirely between the 800 and the 900 megahertz band that operates on frequency modulation on those old telephone systems it used to fulfill what you call full duplex operations in terms of the fact that calls are simultaneous half duplex means then calls are alternative like for example on a walkie-talkie system however the frequency modulation of 1g technology operate on full duplex systems simultaneous that people could talk to each other on a full duplex operations on personal communication systems such as mobile cellular phones the history of this mobile radio system would come from the whole concept of telekinesis where lecturers in the past would have found ways of communicating via brain waves and by via brain waves they would use what you call the radio system in order to communicate via on a radio channel so because these analog cellular systems is used today hundreds of radio channels a mobile telephone cannot scan them all but what happens basically it will scan the available channel that it knows through what you call a dedicated control channel so basically there are two different types of channels they are control channels and they are voice channels control channels carry only digital message and again because of the fact that its own the 1g is primarily analog in nature it still had some form of control information being channeled via a control channel for example paging in terms of a call that is being coming in the real term is called paging when a phone is ringing otherwise known as an alert um, sms information call information call retrieving systems all those handoff and so on will be considered and call waiting will be considered as a control channel your voice channel however is primarily used to transfer voice like when you're talking back and forth but even even when you are doing voice conversations small bursts of stop and burst messages will be passed through your voice channel for digital information to maintain what you call the current call so these current analog systems as a rule only had between 20 to 30 subscribers for each radio channel depending on the average talk time meaning then that if you have a 50 channel in a specific urban or rural area it will accommodate between a thousand to 1600 subscribers meaning 50 multiplied by 20 or 50 multiplied by 32 in terms of the capacity of the system 1g technology which some people used to refer to as the old tdma system so let us understand now the basic operations of a cellular system one of these questions is going to be coming in the exam 
in terms of what is the basic operations first and foremost it involves what you call a call initiation of the phone when it is powered on listening for paging messages idle in terms of waiting until somebody call or attempting to access when it's required if somebody is again trying to um, to call your phone or you are trying to access some form of information and conversation mode in terms of stuff from burst messages that takes place as well when you're on a call so initialization first and foremost is when the phone is power form is initialized by searching for a predetermined control channel that it may or may not know if it knows that control channel like for example if you are custom living in the southern parts of Trinidad and Tobago it will tune into the strongest channel that it initialization of the visitor location register would do first so it will initialize on the strongest channel that is accustomed to in initializing mode to listen and then your control channel will retrieve what you call the system and setup information from the home location register which will be replicated to the physical local location register where your phone now will be online waiting for either to access or for a page or a call idle mode now is after initialization the mobile telephone enters into what you call our idle mode it waits for either incoming page or it sends that you are going to dial a call otherwise known as an access so when the phone rings is considered as a page and when you are making or initiate a call or dialing a call through it bfm df tm tones is considered as what you call an access when your call begins to retrieve or initiate it, the mobile telephone enters what you call system access mode to try to access the system via what you consider a control channel in conversation mode now what happens is that when you gain the access the control channel sends what you call initial voice channel designation something like tcp ip to what to consider the three-way handshake message indicates an open voice channel it will use what you call current sense multiple access for collision avoidance in this case the mobile telephone then turns or tunes in to the designated voice channels and enters into conversational mode as the mobile telephone operates on a voice channel the system uses what you call fm modulation otherwise known as a commercial brand broadcasting system that is normally used for fm before they used to use amplitude modulation am bands it will send what you call control messages in terms of voice channels in the voice form by short blank and burst messages so control messages can be sent along what you call the audio signals when you're on a call so even though if you're on a call in conversation mode you will still have control information taking place in the form of stop and burst messages access now is when a mobile telephone is attempting to obtain access via a cellular system mobile telephones compete on the control channel there's a competition hence the reason for csma cd and csma ca access is attempted when a command is retrieved by the mobile telephone indicating that the system needs to service the mobile phone for example you're trying to make a call or a call is coming in in terms of a page as a result of the request from the user to place a call either or are they paging or you're trying to access via a call your busy idle status now is considered what you call when you gain access by monitoring the busy idle status same concept of carrying sense multiple access for collision detection it will listen on that channel to make sure that nobody else is transmitting on that channel it will begin to transmit on the base station simultaneously via the full duplex multiplexing technology of the mobile cellular system will monitor the channel busy status transmission must begin within a prescribed time an algorithm is going to be set up and the mobile station finds that the control channel access is free or the access attempt is stopped on the assumption that another mobile telephone has possibly gained the attention of the base station controller or receiver so you would not know this in the background because all these algorithms will be taking place now trying to sense which control channel will be available to either initiate a call or for a page to come in Call origination now is when you attempt to access 
or so you or you succeed in the system by sending out what you call a channel assignment message commanding the mobile telephone to tune into a cellular voice so when a subscriber dials the mobile telephone to initiate a call it is called an origination when a mobile telephone initiates a call or dials the digit is called an origination so a call origination access attempts message is sent to the cellular system that contains what you call the dial digits identifying information amongst or along with other information so you're going to send other information besides the dial digit and so on to make sure that the phone remains in what you call the white hat stage all right and it's not a misbehaving cellular device if the system allows services the system will assign a voice channel which it is going to do to the designator person or the message in a voice channel and again it will have stop and boost messages will take place if the access attempts fail the mobile telephone waits for a random amount of time before it redials or before it tries again sometimes you'll be trying to um, to get a, a particular um, uh, person on a cellular phone or a particular mobile device and because of several factors in, including um, attenuation and signals you may not be able to add as well as um, um collisions as well you may not be able to get access at that point in time hence the reason for what you call the um, prescribed internal algorithm it should have the mobile device wait for a specific point in time so collision would be avoided on the mobile network and understand when you're trying to access a voice channel in a sun to for simultaneous conversation mode with a mobile device so what happened basically that that control channel is going to wait for a prescribed amount of time concerning the algorithm and then it's going to try again to access the system but it's going to avoid collisions at all costs paging now is the <coughs> when a phone calls normally what people normally call um your phone is ringing the real term the technological term is called a page you understand and a page is basically a control channel message that contains the telephone mobile identification number that mobile phone um, that um, would as well as your some people may refer to it as as, as your, your regular mobile number all right and what happens with this page is that the telephone determines if it has been paged now sometimes you would find yourself that um you may page uh, uh to mobile number but some other number may um may some other mobile device that does not connect it to that mobile identification number would ring and some of these issues have been rectified over the period in time we move on now by looking at the concept of tune so after a mobile telephone has been commanded to tune to a radio voice channel it sends mostly voice information of again even though it sends voice information it will periodically con send control messages and this may be sent between base stations and mobile telephone systems to make sure that if you want to deal with either actually way calling or to adjust your power level on your phone in case in the event that you are very far away from a base station and, um, and a handoff is necessary and other special services too as well as i say three-way calling and, and and call waiting and so on so you stop and burst messages must take place even though you're tuned into conversation mode on a radio something in it consider with what you call discontinuous transmission and i would explain this in terms of um conserving battery time sometimes you would find that you would be on one end of the phone and one person will only be talking right through sometimes your phone will just go into a silent mode and it'll be like okay um you not like if the person is not particularly hearing you or like if your phone went off it's because of the fact is that the phone went into discontinuous transmission they're still hearing you but the fact that they're not talking on the other end and in order to wake up the phone then the person will have to respond even though so the person will only be in what you call listening mode at that point in time and that is a means of so um, um con conserving battery life all right so any mobile telephone user begins to talk again then it will be out of discontinuous transmission at this point in time all right so this is a diagram that you would need to identify an exam for 1g system please learn it in terms of cellular systems and this diagram shows that there are two types of radio channels 
control channels and voice channels that um, use what you call frequency shift to send control message in terms of data while you're on a call and the voice channels use FM modulation with brief blank and burst digital information to send in the event if you have handoff through a calling and so on right so the basic analog cellular system the station typically have two antennas one for receiving and one for transmission dual receiver antennas increase the ability to receive the radio signal from mobile telephones which typically have a much lower transmission power level than the transmitters in the base station and we talk about this in terms of cell splitting especially in those areas that are urban versus the rural areas base stations are connected to a mobile switching center we talk about the old concept of switching center that connects to um to the pts public switching telephone network right landlines as well as it to interconnect other services like um different mobile um, users and so on digital versus b mobile in the switching center so this mobile switching center is connected to the telephone network to allow mobile telephones to, to connect to a standard line line otherwise known as the public switching telephone network the pstn network all right so in conclusion a 1g stands for first generation refers to first generation of wireless technology telephone um it's not very popular but it was very popular in those days some of the um uh wireless standards so 1g technology would be a mobile telephone system most of us are uh, would be aware of the advanced mobile telephone system the amts systems um push to talk this the amts system i i believe is the system that was first introduced into trinidad and tobago when cellular technology came first we want to also pay attention to is 88 this would be your fm original cellular technology remember that the is 88 in terms of the arms the same thing that i'm saying here arms is 88 so if you talk about the is 88 we talk about the first generation um cellular fm original technology let's use what you call spectrum speed spectrum we use um digital data systems in terms of um, analog technology but it also had digital um, information that could have been sent so you, re you refer to this technology as IS-88 and the analog FM again as we conclude we talk about two different channels con control channels that send um, not only are uh, used for call setting up and initiation call handling and so on but continuous stop and burst messages while a mobile user is on a call when we also have analog fm in terms of voice channel where most of the times where voice would be transmitted since most of you already talking on a call right so you could research some of these systems um if you want i would um recommend you only research am salon amps not for um any exams per se but AMPS is one of the advanced mobile um, systems that were first introduced into Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. Um, what some people may refer to as the old um, IS-88 system. All right, so points to note, first generation was designed for voice communication only. One example of the advanced mobile phone system used in North America as well as in Trinidad. Remember that the AMS is analog. It uses the 800 and 900 IS band band. The band between 824 to 846 megahertz is used for reverse communication from mobiles workstation to the base stations and the band from 869 to 894 use what you call forward communication from the base stations to the mobile workstation again some of these um examples here in terms of the amps in terms of the frequency as you can see here use band pass filters of 30 kilohertz for forward communication um band pass filters again at 30 kilohertz for reverse communication so you have to know the terms of the the, the bands that are used and we spoke about bands in terms of our model aircrafts taking on different frequencies and we could see that um for fsk being used and the fm modulation for voice fsk being used of basically digital information right frequency division multiple accessing technology we talk about the different multiple accesses technology in the earlys when we come back we're going to look at um the whole and idea of um tdma in our next slide but to conclude this time we talk about arms here that uses a refuse reuse factor of one over seven in terms of the honeycomb structure we spoke about the honeycomb um 
one of the issues of the um the frequency modulation technology using amps privacy was a big issue because you could have facilitated what you call electronic eavesdropping you could have actually eavesdrop on cellular phone calls because of how close the honeycomb structure was when we look at tdma in our next lesson we would see how this was corrected um but not tdma the whole tdma system but tdma under the gsm architecture